Oh, what's up, guys? Jay on the Segway here. So today we got the we got the homies in the back seat. You know what I'm saying? You see him? All right. So today's a day. What day? We're gonna go on and get that sound box go on and popping. I want you guys to see or hear what it sounds like. That's always gonna be tricky. But um, screw the copyright. I just want you guys to hear what it sounds like. I'll give you guys a whole bunch of information on it. This video is going to be long as hell. So go on ahead and get your popcorn. And um, if you don't have time to watch this video, if you don't have at least 20 to 30 minutes, then don't watch it yet. Just go on and find another video. I'm sure a whole bunch of them about to be out on the market. I did an initial video on this speaker on the on, on the Soundbox Go before this video, just to kind of give you guys a quick overview and just kind of looking at it from the outside to see what it looks like and things that you can expect. This video will go briefly, briefly over it, but more of just uh just more in depth, I guess I could say. So um, if you, this is what you guys want to see, go on and stay tuned and um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's go. Today's video, we're gonna go check this guy out. We're gonna go over some features. We're gonna go over how it sounds a little bit. Can't really show you guys how it sounds, but I'll give you guys a little bit of audio. Um, basically, it's a $700 portable Bluetooth speaker. Not so portable, but... It's portable enough, but big enough to be used on like a tripod stand or anything similar to that, where the pole can like go up inside the middle. That's what she said. and keep it you know suspended in the air like this so let's go over ahead and go over this thing real quick first thing we're going to talk about expectations guys what do we expect from this speaker well since it's kind of sort of like a half version of the soundbox 3 if you guys don't know what the soundbox 3 is um didn't make a video on it on this channel but i'll send a link to you guys you guys can check it out soundbox 3 is basically a bigger version of this pretty much about twice the size, but it has the same components on the inside. This one's just laid out a little different, a little bit smaller, so you guys could take it to a bunch of little places like this. Um, we'll go over all the different scenarios where this speaker would come in handy or be a little bit more perfect than let's say a Soundbox 3. I'm gonna try not to spend too much time on the features of this speaker because if you guys really wanna see the features, you can go on the website, read everything they have. But, you know, it does have Bluetooth 5.0, which is pretty much good for, according to Soundbox, they field tested it up to like 50 feet, which like 10 meters, I guess. I'm pretty sure one meter is like 3.6 feet. Could be tripping, but on their website, it says 10, 10 meters or 50 feet, and it's maximum up to like 150 feet or 200 meters or whatever 150 feet is in meters. Um, so it's got pretty decent range. We'll test that range out in this video, but... Soundbox says it's a you know it's about that much and now if you're going to use it indoors in between windows I mean not in between windows but like if you're going to have the speaker outside but you're going to be inside controlling the the audio coming through the speaker from the inside you may lose a little bit of range probably depends on the wall and everything like that but it's got Bluetooth 5.0 we got a swappable battery app support the swappable battery in this is called a Soundbox battery so within the Soundbox ecosystem any battery for any sound box except for the sound box one and probably the zero the zero is something real rare guy named gary i can't remember his last name but he's on a facebook group for sound box he actually has a zero that's a very rare unit but um sound box two sound box three and now the sound box go the batteries for either one of those speakers will actually work on this and vice versa the battery from this will work on the sound box three and the sound box two couple more good things about the speaker is it has three different sound profiles and then a fourth sound profile, but that'll be the one that you set. So you got power plus, you got bass plus, you got indoor mode. Indoor mode really makes this sound like an indoor speaker. And I don't mean like a big powerful home theater style indoor speaker, but it make it sound like an indoor speaker. Like the thing is indoors. It's crazy if I, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm, it's just, it's really kind of quiet, which is actually good, especially if you like to listen to soft, you know, if you're a soft music listener or a soft audio listener, when you're indoors, you just kind of want a nice, decent sound. You don't want any punchy basses or, or high highs or anything like that. The speaker going to sound like a doggone indoor speaker. Um, they also say it's splash proof. I'm going to test that. Yeah. Is dent proof. Look, that dent proof part, that's official. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, that thing is, at least the grill is strong. Now, if you were to like have the speaker, I'm talking loud like I don't have the microphone sitting right here. If you were gonna hit the speaker right here, 
on the bottom, on the top right here in the middle part, you're probably gonna have a little more of a compromisation as far as uh, durability goes. You know, if you were to drop this thing on something sharp and that sharp item hit it somewhere in that middle part that I just pointed at, uh, you guys are probably gonna have some issues with uh, durability. You got a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, which is booyah right there. With that 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, I've done things as far as any powered microphone. So right now I'm using the Rode Wireless Go 2 to do this video and I really hope it's not too loud. It's probably not because I didn't even adjust the gain. This thing weighs 20 pounds. So if you guys can't lift that much weight, that's kind of what you got to deal with with this thing. So it's kind of heavy, not really, but it's bulky. It's a bulky portable speaker. It's not too portable. It's not like a, you know, uh, I don't know, like a turtle box. Maybe a turtle box is a little bit smaller than that. You know, if you guys haven't seen a turtle box, then I'll show you a picture right, right there. Yeah, that's 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 your turtle box. Look a little like a toilet with the cage over the where your butt. Okay, anyways, this thing has IP65 ratings as far as like water resistant. So it's like waterproof, wa splash proof, dust proof. Uh, the electronics inside this this speaker has. Um, what Soundbox says, electronic coating. So there is a lot of resistance to that, like moisture wouldn't be an issue. So if you're in like, you know, foggy conditions where there's a lot of humidity in the air, you're not gonna have any problems because the electronics inside this entire speaker is all protected. Now, speaking of protection, um, you do wanna get a 3.5 millimeter plug for here. I don't know how water resistant this is, but just to avoid things like corrosion and rust, probably wouldn't be an issue, but to avoid it, you wanna go on ahead and get these plugs, links in the description below. And one of the best things about the initial features on this speaker is you got a two year warranty. However, if you register your device, early, um, early adopters or early purchasers of this speaker, we are initially like the first day that we all been pretty much getting it, been having issues or were having issues with registering this speaker. Registering this speaker on the Soundbox app gives you an extra one year of warranty that's a that's a pretty good warranty that's three years of warranty okay the soundbox people the, the support team is pretty good so you guys shouldn't have really any issues not everybody will just not have issues there will be some people with issues but as long as you're respectful and courteous i don't see an issue with getting your speaker taken care of um i don't know what if what the warranty is like for the battery but i would assume it's the same you know you just communicate with the team they'll get you squared away Let's go over some of the uh, things before we actually hear this speaker. A couple things to check out first. Soundbox said this speaker will do 10 hours on max volume, right? Of course, that's going to depend on the type of music you're playing. If, you, if your max volume is pushing it closer to its 121 decibel sound levels, it might be nine hours. You know, remember every time something is tested, every time something's advertised, it's always in optimum conditions. Very few companies will actually push things really, really hard and then advertise those numbers, whatever numbers they get out of that type of test as the specs for their, you know, for their equipment or whatever it is they're trying to sell you to include Soundbox. But Soundbox actually sort of did that. They said 10 hours at max volume. Now, the thing about this speaker is, no, we won't talk about that yet. We won't talk about that yet. 40 hours at mid volume. Again, it depends on the type of music you're playing. That's basically what they're saying. The volume knob on the speaker, to me, really depends on how much juice you want this speaker to drink. Yeah, how much juice you want the speaker to drink from the battery when you're playing whatever you're gonna be playing on the speaker. I reckon, to be honest, if you're listening to like YouTube videos or you're watching movies, because their sound isn't constant and so it's not constantly pulling that current from the speaker like music would, I would think it lasts a little bit longer. The volume knob on this speaker will determine how much energy you want this thing to use at any given time. Basically with these speakers, and this goes for all the sound boxes, at least the sound box three and the sound box two, and then this sound box go. If you don't need the volume, don't use it. Sounds crazy, right? Just because you can don't mean you should. That's just my personal opinion, all right? This thing was designed to go to 11, like Soundbox says, and it does good at 11, depending on the music and depending on the sound profile you're using while you're freaking cranking it up. I try not to use the volume knob past nine, but sometimes I may put it to 11 and then just use my Bluetooth device, you know, use the volume knob on the Bluetooth device to determine how loud we're gonna go with the speaker. But uh, yeah, if you don't need it, don't use it. Now, this speaker can be used as a standalone speaker. What does that even mean? Basically, you turn, put the battery in, plug it up, turn it on. 
any Bluetooth device, probably has to be Bluetooth, I don't know, 4.0 or newer. Uh, any Bluetooth device, whatever you're gonna use to play audio through this speaker, uh, turn it on, find it through the Bluetooth settings, and boom, plug and play. Now, if you don't change the sound profile on the speaker at all, like let's say you never download the app and you never, so you never change it, it's going to be on the power plus mode, which is basically the default setting for this speaker. And that's what it's gonna play at. It sounds okay in power plus mode. It sounds okay, okay. It's just one woofer less than the Soundbox 3. So there are gonna be some sound differences between this and the Soundbox 3, even though this speaker does have the same internals as a Soundbox 3, you can imagine it does have different tuning, okay, because it's a smaller unit, because the ports for this thing, and it does have ports, and I'll show you guys in a little bit, um, everything's a little different, you know, it's different dynamics, so it's going to sound a little different. But anyways, um, using the app, however, allows you to update it, you know, Soundbox may improve the sound quality of this speaker because it does have the internals to give you better quality than what I've been hearing so far, but it allows you updates you know updates are always good for the most part sometimes updates are crap but yeah for this thing updates are is a good idea so it'll allow you access to updates and uh that's what helps keep it future proof so you don't have to use your app so if you forget your phone at home and you have an ipod or something like that go on ahead and use it you don't need the app this does not have trs and xlr inputs the soundbox 3 and your soundbox 2 does um however you guys who do have the Soundbox 2, Soundbox 3, you can use your XLR and TRS inputs. You can use those on that speaker, make that speaker the host, and then make this speaker join those speakers. And then this speaker will have, you know, if you need those XLR or TRS inputs to play certain types of things like DJ equipment, you'll get this speaker to cooperate by doing it that way. So that's your workaround. This speaker does, however, doesn't have it. It just has a 3.5 millimeter jack. Sorry guys. Some people may ask, do I have to have, do I have to use the battery all the time? Technically, yes, but you don't have to, okay? There is another, not another option. The charging cable, and Dan, I, darn on me that I didn't bring it, but the charging cable has two ends. It has a male and a female end. You take the male end and you plug it into the speaker. The female end, you'll take the battery male's end and plug it into that female end on that other side of the charger cable. And then plug the charger into the wall and you can play the speaker. You can play music endlessly, unlimited amount. They said, however, do not try to go over five. So five bars of, pop, of, of volume on the actual speaker. You can turn your Bluetooth volume all the way up all you want, you can crank it up, but do not go over five. If you go over five, the speaker may turn off or you never know, the speaker is going to try to pull the current. So when something tries to pull current and it, the current's not there, this one you start to damage internals. That's why there's fuses on certain electronics. That's what the fuses are for. If the device that needs energy tries to pull the current because you're requiring it to use more current, that joker will shut off on you. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Let's talk about host mode, all right? Host mode with this speaker, you can be a host, you can join it with other speakers, and you can just play it solo as a solo independent speaker. This thing, to, to me, my personal opinion, all right? Here's the thing, we all have different ears, okay? My, my ears are listening for certain types of sounds. My ears are accustomed to a certain type of sound. So with this speaker, you got the three little different modes, right? As far as the SKA communications, you have host, you have join, and you got just, well, so basically two. And then you got normal mode, you can just use the speaker as a standalone speaker. Now, host means that you have a Bluetooth device, like an iPod, you connect the iPod to this speaker, and now let's say you have a Soundbox 3 that you want to connect to this speaker, right? You want them to talk to each other. You put this one as a host and connect the Soundbox 3 to join this guy as a host speaker, and then basically whatever you do on your iPod is going to immediately go to this speaker, and this speaker is going to tell the other speaker, hey, this is what we're doing, buddy, we're going to do that. That's kind of cool. And you can set it as a stereo setup. So you can have this as a left channel and the other speaker as a right channel. So now we're gonna go over the part that you guys have been waiting for. Now here's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take my speaker, right? I'm going to stand about one meter. Ah, it's not really a good idea. We'll just listen to a little bit of audio from the speaker now and we'll go from there. This is not really ideal, but I do have a wind muff on my microphone and I can just tuck it inside of my shirt to give it further wind protection because it is kind of windy out here. 
as you guys can see, things in the background are moving around. But we're gonna turn the speaker on, we're gonna crank it up a little bit, listen to it, it should be broken in. I had it sitting in the garage all night inside my car, um, playing music on Bass Plus. Now, disclaimer, Bass Plus seems to be the one to keep the speaker in. So, I would download the app, connect to it, put it in Bass Plus, and leave it, all right? Now, here's another disclaimer with Bass Plus. When you crank the volume up, you guys have to notice, all right, when you crank the volume up on this speaker in bass plus mode, you, you, it won't get distorted, but you lose, a, the volume will lower a little bit because you're wanting it to play bass frequencies that one, it can't play, and two, the woofer is too much resistance with the bass. So what it'll do is it'll pull the power down a little bit to where it can contain, it can continue maintaining the high volume without blowing your woofer. That's a good thing. So you kind of have to know your limitations with these types of speakers. You can't just crank it all the way up and expect it to just boom, boom, boom. Now, I have the battery. I got a full battery in this joint. The battery is topped off, so we got max power. We ain't gonna have any current issues. So let's check this out. Hey, uh, you guys wanna see the elephant in the room? Do you? Do you? All right, let me show you. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the music between the two speakers. I put the speakers exactly the same distance from you guys, so you guys can hear the difference. They're both cranked all the way up to 11. I'm gonna play them both. Both of them are gonna be in bass plus mode, all right? I want you guys to hear the difference. If you hear a difference. Alright guys, so how does this how does the sound box go sound to me? It sounds pretty good. It's very windy today. I don't know if you guys could tell. There's probably a whole lot of wind in the audio, but um get the microphone straight. It is a very windy day today. 35, 40 mile an hour gust with a constant like 22 mile an hour, 20 mile an hour winds. Um I think the sound box go is a go, but you know, it sounds alright. Now, concert audio. Do I feel like I got concert audio? You know what? I'm gonna tell you guys something. And some of you guys may agree with me, maybe some of you guys won't agree with me. This is my personal opinion, all right? It's what I think. I think these speakers sound much better when they're up on a tripod like this than just being on the ground. When they're on the ground, I feel like they could, they feel a little more bassy, and that probably depends on your environment. But being up on the tripod, especially in an outdoor setting, even better in an indoor setting, I think they sound better. I don't know, maybe more because the sound is like leveled with your grill piece, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's just something to think about. Maybe you guys wanna get one of these. I'll leave a link in the description below um, to the tripod that I actually, I'm actually using right now, but there's tons of them. You don't have to use that one. You can shop around and look for one that maybe suits your setup better. But this one's pretty good, I use it and uh, it sounds pretty good on it. Some of you guys may or may not be wondering, does the Soundbox Go actually fit in the Soundbox backpack? Yes and no. I'll uh, show you a quick clip right here. So the backpack strap is all the way as tight as it can go. Right here, you got this much play. You see, this thing will fall out if you're walking around with it. So if I'm going to say, is it compatible with the backpack? plug and play style no so as you guys can see the soundbox go doesn't quite fit plug and play style with the backpack the soundbox backpack but like i said if you guys got you some velcro straps you could get you know get some straps maybe soundbox will make some so you know people's setups aren't looking tacky maybe they can have some soundbox logos on them and they can get some extra straps so if people want to use the soundbox go instead of using the actual strap that you can buy with the soundbox go which is another good thing 
um, you can you can use the backpack if you want to like for if you're hiking or something like that so the soundbox go it, it it does have competitors you know you have the turtle box too you have uh, speakers like the diamond box I think it's the sp3 you have the JBL Eon one two full air got the bump box ultra so with those being mentioned it does have a little bit of competition you know not too bad i think they all have there's different sound to them you know remember everybody's tuning their speakers a little differently so they're not all going to sound the same it's all about what sounds good to you speaking about what sounds good to you is this a 700 dollars speaker is it worth 700 dollars? and if you want to be technical 699 and this is without the strap by the way my opinion Nah, I don't think so, y'all. This speaker feels this this Soundbox Go sounds more like a Soundbox five hundred dollar speaker. Yeah, that depends, though, right? We're in a different time, different era. Everything costs more. Uh, resources are a little bit harder that we know of. You know, these companies, they aren't able to get things like it used to be. You know, I bought the Soundbox 3 in 2020, two, no, 2019, I think I bought it. And um, it was a different time. Things were cheaper, you know. Soundbox Go, $700. You know, there's the Bose S1. There are speakers that you can use to compare to the Soundbox. Uh, you know, shout outs to today's sponsor me and so now the question lies man here's the question who is the sound box go for for the dude who wants to take a picnic while he's making a video or for that guy who likes to throw rocks in the water while he's making a video maybe it's for that guy who likes to take scooter rides while listening to music coughing on to the dirt road or it's for that broke guy who's got a boom doom buggy and he ain't got no radio in it so what does he do well, he go gets his sound box so he has some music to listen to while he rides around town terrorizing everybody in his doom buggy. Well, for that guy who's in the garage cleaning his wheels in his car, don't want to just sit in silence. It could be for that dorm room guy who's just listening to music. Could be for that guy with that motorbike that doesn't have a radio, so he has to use a sound box. The fuck? Oh yeah, we just. Places you go to shoot a video. Mm -mm. Hate to see it. It's definitely for that guy who's a soundbox enthusiast. Or for that guy who's really a soundbox enthusiast, Gary Allen. And it's for people like me. Thanks for watching.